Hi, this is Margaret Bird and welcome to Color Quest and welcome to the end of January here in the Pacific Northwest. It is a little chilly outside, but we had some sun, so I figured why not step outside and enjoy some fresh air. So the last few weeks on Color Quest, we have been looking at indigo, different processes using indigo, both a vat as well as some printing processes. And today, I'd like to keep using that vat. I was able to use it in several projects, which have been featured here for the last few weeks, but I figured there was still a little bit of life left in that indigo vat, and I wanted to try a shibori technique. And just to make things a little bit more fun, I also have tried the shibori with a fresh leaf indigo. Now, back in the fall of 2021, I had a few videos here using fresh leaf indigo that I had harvested from the color farm in Woodenville, Washington. And you will need to watch those videos if you want to learn how to use fresh leaf indigo. Now, depending upon where you are in the world, fresh leaf indigo may be starting to pop up in your dye garden. Here, it's past that time, so you can always look to have a vat instead. Vats can be used year-round. So, take a peek back at those videos, both on the salt rub method, using fresh leaf indigo, as well as the blender method. In this particular video, I've used the blender method because I was able to get a bit more volume and liquid in order to submerge my textile for the shibori technique. And if you'd like to use an indigo vat instead, then you can watch the video showing how I created an indigo vat from the Love of Colors indigo kit. There are many ways to make an indigo vat, and if you love and care for them, they can last a very long time. So there's still some remnants of that beautiful blue in that indigo vat from a few weeks ago. So let's jump in and play around with a shibori technique that can make patterns using indigo. You can click back through the video library here on Color Quest to be able to see the various tutorials on how to work with fresh leaf indigo as well as build an indigo vat. Although the process between a vat indigo and a fresh leaf indigo are different, you will still be utilizing oxidation in order to realize the colors. You will get a different color using fresh leaf than you will with vat indigo. But part of it has to do with how long you leave your textile in the indigo, as well as how many times you let it sit in the vat and then let it oxidize. In order to get the richest, deepest blues, you have to do a multiple of dips and oxidations. So you'll see in today's video that over time, I was able to build up to quite a dark blue with the vat. Now with fresh leaf indigo, I only did the process one time. So I got a relatively light color, but I could have dipped again and again using that fresh leaf indigo dye over the period of maybe 24 hours. It doesn't have as long as a shelf life as the indigo vat. So remember with indigo to build up the color, it is a slow process of dipping and oxidizing and dipping and oxidizing. So those handful of videos are gonna be super useful for you to watch in order for you to create the vat or use the fresh leaf indigo in order to work on this shibori project today.
How about those two different colors? Absolutely beautiful results. Now with Shibori, there are many different ways to fold and tie and use resists. This particular process uses the wood pieces in order to create that block between the textile and the die. Now what I didn't show you in this video is that for the vat version, I unfolded and refolded it many different times. And you can see that I didn't get a full uniform color in all of the squares. In order for me to get blue across more of that, I actually unfolded and refolded it in different ways. At the end of the day, I don't mind that it isn't 100% uniform, as you know. That is not something that tends to be important to me. However, there are probably ways to fold it in a way where you will get a more even distribution of dye. It's also possible that because my vat has been used now for several weeks, that the blue is beginning to fade. And I have not fed it or tended to it, so it's possible that it was not able to penetrate through the multiple layers. Quick fix on that was just to unfold, refold in a slightly different way, reapply the wood pieces and the clothespins, and then go through the dip oxidation, dip oxidation process again and again. I've actually been dipping and dyeing those dark blue, probably 15 to 20 dips over the course of a week, always giving it time to breathe in between. So play around with that. Know that you will get darker colors the more time you give yourself to slowly build up the color. And again, with the fresh leaf indigo, I was pressed for time and I only dipped to that once, maybe twice. So I probably would have gotten a much darker color if I had done multiple dips. Still wouldn't have been that dark blue. Fresh Leaf Indigo tends to be more of a robin's egg blue or a beautiful teal or blue green color. These ended up being quite green and actually I love them. So I hope you will enjoy either one of those processes. So let me know how it goes if you try Shibori with either one of these indigos. Now with my vat still seemingly giving me some blue, I've decided to do one more video here on Color Quest. Next week, we will be looking at a simple dip dye ombre project using both of those indigos again. So remember, if you are interested in learning more about where I got the fresh leaf indigo from the color farm or the kits from the love of color, those links to the websites are in the description below. So check those out. I also have a few free PDF downloads to help you out in your dye practice. And if you're so inclined to join me in my cooking color class, which is a digital workshop. All of those links are down below. Oh, and I also have my ice installation note card bundles available. So go check those out as well to see some of the things I'm using my natural color for in my own art practice. Have a great week and look forward to seeing you next Friday here on Color Quest. And over dye and over dye and over dye with a and over dye with an ombre